Along with the latest update for Luminar Neo version 1.2, Skylum have also released an HDR merge plugin for Luminar Neo. So let's take a look at what it does, if it's any good, who should get it, and who should take a hard pass. Now before you freak out and start saying, now Anthony, I don't want my photos to look like neon clown vomit, thank you very much. We need to understand the true and very valid reason for HDR. So blatantly, HDR is not this. It is definitely not this either, and it should certainly never be this. I know that, you know that, and thankfully Skylum knows that too. So if we're not doing that with HDR, what's the point? Well the human eye can actually see around 28 stops of dynamic range in terms of contrast from the darkest to the very brightest points. Even the very best sensors in the most expensive cameras today can only push to around sort of that 14 stop mark. So in particularly contrasty scenes you can either expose for the shadows or the highlights but not both. And that, my friends, is where HDR used properly comes in. It's a tool that allows us to capture more realistically and authentically what the eye could see, rather than what the camera sensor was limited to capturing. So if we can start our photo editing from a foundation that contains all of that dynamic range, we're in a really good place. And that's where this new HDR Merge plugin for Neo comes in. So before we take a look at who it's best suited for and whether it's worth the investment, let's take a look at it in action. So I'm currently in the pre-release version of Lumina Neo update Two. So this will be version 1.2. So some things may just change slightly between what you see here and what you guys will get as the update. You guys have already seen me cover the new dodge and burn feature in my previous video. And if you haven't, I'll link it in the description. But this one is just going to focus all on this HDR merge section right here. So this tiny little palette here, this is where the magic happens. So currently I just have a folder full of bracketed images. So if you guys are familiar with HDR, you will know it's literally a case of shooting shooting underexposed photos, overexposed photos, rather than just settling for that mid exposure that the camera thinks it should be, and then you combine those photos. So let's say we want to create an HDR version of this photograph here. So this is what the camera captured as a base exposure. And this is most certainly not what I was seeing with my eyes when I was there. I was able to see detail around the clouds here where the sun is. I was able to see detail in the shadows as well. And this is what I'm talking about that is the problem. No matter how far I try and recover this file, if I jump into the edit section and into the develop tool here and I start boosting the exposure really, really high, straight away you'll see that we don't really get nice clean shadows down here. Things start to fall apart pretty quickly there and also get overexposed on the boat. Whereas if I bring the exposure down to try and bring detail back into the sky, no matter how much I drop that exposure, I just don't have detail for the sun. So this is where this fix comes in using this new tool. So I'll jump back into the catalog section. I'm gonna right click and just remove those adjustments by reverting to the original. And all we need to do is select the three photos by clicking on the first, shift clicking on the last, and then we just drag them over into this HDR merge section. And now we can see the three thumbnails, one with the exposure value of minus one, a mid exposure of zero, and a plus one for a brighter exposure. And now at its most basic, all we'll need to do is click this merge button. But because we've got potential movement in the waves here, what we want to do is open up the little cog icon here, and within the settings tab, we can choose to auto align the image. So if you've been hand holding the camera for your set of photos, then absolutely turn auto alignment on. If you're on a tripod, then that may not be quite as necessary. But if you have movement in terms of leaves moving, waves moving, things like that, then you'll want to turn ghost reduction on as well. This plugin keeps things super simple, which is great. Really easy to remember what to do here. If you're moving use auto alignment if there's things moving in your scene that's where you want ghost reduction and if you've got both going on tick both that's it and we can select a reference image to say that this is the particular photo that we want you to prioritize go with these waves rather than these or these so I'm happy using the mid exposure for that and you can choose whether you want a low amount of de-ghosting right through to the highest but obviously the higher you go the longer it's going to take for your processor to figure this out so I'm just going to go with that close this down again Again, and we're going to click merge and hopefully this shouldn't take too long to actually create an image that's going to become a much better foundation for us to build our edit from and now it's stopped calculating I should see another photograph here but I don't so where's that gone well once the plugin has actually created your HDR file it actually spits it out into a separate folder called HDR merge so now within the HDR merge folder we have a much better file to work with this is now a 16-bit TIFF file so if we open that up 
The photo still looks realistic and we now have a much deeper level of data existing in this file for us to do a much more refined edit than we would have had using any one of those previous single bracketed photos. So you guys can get a really good feel for the power of this tool and the attention to detail in terms of realism. Let me show you the before and the after as in a single frame compared to the HDR merge. Now bearing in mind no editing has been done to any of these files other than just merging those HDR files. So it's literally like a power platform for us to jump off into a much better edit. So is the HDR merge plugin right for you? So HDR is best suited to subjects that are relatively still that we can photograph from a tripod. So if you predominantly photograph people, portraits, sports, pets, wildlife, things like that, then probably HDR isn't gonna to be too much help for you and you should probably just move on by and not worry about it. But if you're like me and you photograph landscapes, architecture, real estate, street photography, things like that, then this is the ideal plugin for you because it's gonna give you a much better foundation to start all of your photo edits from. I do really love hearing from you guys, so let me know in the comments any genres that I might have missed or what in particular you might be using Merge to HDR for in your workflow. If you've decided this plugin looks like a really good fit for your workflow, then the next question we need to ask ourselves is, is it actually good value or not? Prior to the launch of this plugin, my HDR workflow predominantly revolved around Aurora 19. And the reason for that was the results you get straight from your initial HDR merge were phenomenally realistic. And that's what I'm looking for with my HDR. So the fact this plugin is taking and utilizing that very heart and core of Aurora 19 and using that as the algorithm that actually generates these HDR images and you get it for a fraction of the price then I think yes it is absolutely good value admittedly Aurora 19 did have more tools for the post-production and development of your photo once it had created that HDR image but to be honest because we're editing the rest of the photo in a workflow in Neo we don't need those tools they, they're kind of redundant and irrelevant so from recollection Aurora was I think $149 or thereabouts a long time since I bought it but this plugin is just $49 so in my opinion well worth it so who's eligible for the plugin and how do you get it? Well, obviously, because it runs through Luminar Neo, that is a prerequisite. You have to have Luminar Neo, and I guess you do as you're watching this video. At the time of recording, it's $49 for all users, unless you already own Aurora 19, in which case you can get this plugin for free. Also, if you haven't bought Luminar Neo outright and you are on the yearly subscription plan, then this is also included in that as well. Sometimes when Skylum release a product, they package it with other free goodies and things like that. So whatever the current best deal is I'll put a link to that in the description below so check that out guys if you want to get hold of this so in conclusion after my last video about dodge and burn tool where I wasn't particularly flattering about it and pointed out a few flaws I'm really delighted to be singing the praises of this HDR merge tool I think it is a really good and strong addition to Luminar Neo so far from everything I've put into the HDR Merge plugin, I've been really pleased with the results. Very much akin to what I saw with my eye when I was there on site. However, what do you do if you like the HDR Merge but you don't want it with that full 100% intensity? Currently there's no reduction slider, which could be seen as a problem, but as always, I like to offer you guys solutions when things aren't set up quite the way we would want. But I'm not gonna cover that in this video because you might be somebody who decides that the HDR Merge plugin just isn't right for you. So I won't waste your time, but if you are someone who wants me to cover that, please just write HDR tips in the comments below and I will put a video together about that little hack, how we can work around that. If you do go ahead and purchase the plugin and would like a complete tutorial on how to use the HDR Merge plugin, Plugin with a full edit on the end of it, that complete workflow. Just write full HDR edit in the comments below and I'll put a video together dedicated to you guys all about that. Thank you so much for watching. Here is another video that might be worth checking out. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel already, love to have you along for the ride. Share heaps of training videos all about photo editing, good stuff like that. So click that button there, subscribe, and then check that next video out. I'll see you there, guys. Thanks for watching.